Hey gang, Mocha Boy here. Welcome back and thanks for tuning back in. I know it's been a while since I've posted a video. Um, I haven't quite left the game. Uh, you know, it's a fun game, but uh, you know, real life happens and I have had to take a step back and um, reduce my play time. But uh, you know, I'm, I'm still in the clan and uh, still trying to help out where I can. And uh, but that's what I wanted to show you today. We had a really interesting raid. Um, we were up against this clan, American Pride. They were rocking about 94 wins. We're at 91 wins, uh, so closing in on 100 there. Um, this was their top. Uh, this was their top TH9 base. We had uh, just a couple quick things here. We had one, two, three, four, um, four town hall tens. They had seven, so our town hall tens had to do a little uh, extra duty just to make sure that uh, we, we kept pace with the star count. But anyway, um, this was their top TH9 base. This was a mass witch attack. And I'll explain exactly why that was selected for this base and, and who was able to do it. Um, this is the base. It's an open base. And by open, I mean there's nothing protecting the defenses except for what's in this core. Whenever you see a base like this, or even in some cases, southern teaser bases, they are highly susceptible to mass switch. And I'll explain why in just a second. But um, So a couple of things with the way that, that these bases work. This buffer zone kind of in here makes it impossible to target anything in, inside. I mean, you could go in there with about 20 wall breakers, but then you know, you're wasting a lot of troop space for nothing. The nice thing about the, the, the way that the defenses are laid out is that, uh, and what makes this particularly susceptible to mass witch is that there's nothing blocking the skeletons from getting to their targets. And typically what happens with mass witch raids when they fail is that the skeletons, along with the witches, get plugged up inside one of these pockets, and then they either get blasted away by a mortar or a whiz tower. So in this case, the strategic considerations for planning a mass witch attack are um, you have to take out the mortars, you have to have a plan to take out the mortars, you have to have a plan to tie up, maybe not take out, but at least tie up the wizard towers. If you can do those two things, you can literally launch a mass witch attack from any corner of the map and it will probably end up winning um, regardless of what you do. That's how powerful it can be because once you have about somewhere between 10 and, 13, 10 and 12 witches on the, on the board, uh, one of our guys did the math, those witches, those those skeletons, it's eight skeletons times you know however many witches can do roughly upwards of about twenty thousand DPS, and you'll see that in just a sec. So uh, as far as this base was concerned, the plan was pretty simple. He was going to come in from the south, take out this mortar, tie up tie up the whiz towers, and then send two teams, one left, one right, and uh, they would just circle the base. But then when the um, a lot of practice here. So uh, yeah, the plan, the plan was, <laughs> sorry. So the plan was to send two fire teams, one to go up that way, one to go that way. And when they got to about this point, that's when it was safe, or even to this point here, that's when it was safe to launch some hogs. So about, I don't know, eight to 10 hogs directly into the core of the base with four heels. And they would have been able to, uh, wipe out pretty much everything in this core. So those four Teslas, those two, um, those two cross uh, expos, excuse me, and then uh, and then go through to help out with cleanup. So that's that's the plan, really simple plan. And let's watch it in action. Now this was our number fifteen. Our, so he was in he was our lowest member, and he was attacking the top town hall eight base. So one golem down to tie up these defenses. One giant to take down this mortar. Now again, it's absolutely critical to get these mortars taken down. Even if it was just another hog or whatever, you have to get those taken down because they are the enemy of mass witch. Uh, they, they wipe out the skeletons, they one-shot the skeletons, leaving the, the witches vulnerable, and then, uh, and then you're in a lot of trouble. But once those witches get two rounds in to spawn their skeletons, pretty much game over for the base. So uh, there's one jump down there just to start getting some of the witches into the core, if at all possible. Um, the way that you know mass witch works in, in 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 these types of raids, it almost doesn't matter what's in the clan castle because there will be so many skeletons on the board that uh, you know they'll be completely overwhelmed. He brought a poison for this dragon in the castle, no big deal. Um, some of the jumps start to go, start to direct some of the troops into the core. Now what we're doing at this point is he's waiting, he's waiting for these defenses to go down to to release his hogs. But once they hit those corners, the hogs make it directly into the core, and he can start with his heels. And then once, we're talking, I think it's like 10 hogs, once you get those hogs inside there under a few heels, there's almost nothing that can stop them. They'll just go through and you know, process each one of those defenses in about two attack rounds. 
So while that's happening, we still have this fire team going around the, uh, the side of the base, just going gang gangbuster. Um, one of the questions that comes up a lot is whether or not to bring rages. You absolutely never want to bring rages with, uh, you never want to pair rages with mass witch attacks, except in certain scenarios. Uh, like if you're attacking a Town Hall 10, that's a you know, pretty special scenario. But the problem with doing that is if you were to take a rage and then rage the witches, you, it's possible that you could rage them and then speed them up directly into a, a, a big bomb. And the reason that this works against bases like this, regardless of where the bombs are placed, is because these skeletons go up ahead and then you know they, they act as mine clearers. So um, yeah, I mean at this point now we're we're getting towards the end of the base, towards the end of the attack. But I want to watch. I want you to watch what happens once the uh, skeletons redirect them and go into the core of the base. This is a you know more or less max Lego base. Um, now watch. <laughs> Hang on a second here. So do, do rough count here. One, two, three, four. Sec four seconds to go through those lava walls. Three seconds to go through that skull, and then once they're in. They absolutely just melt through what's left. I, I think he uh, said eight of the witches had uh, survived out of the 12 that he brought. And that was the, um, sorry, this was the composition. It was two loons to take out a couple of one-for-one -one trades on the corners, eight hogs to take out the core, and then 12 mass witch, one golem in the castle, and then four giants just to tie for this course. And we've, we've uh, been using, the, we've been applying the strategy with pretty good effect. We've got a couple more examples of this coming up, and I'll uh, be able to, to document those and show you. So thanks for tuning in.